What's hey. up, mamas? I'm Rebecca. You're watching the Reseller Mom Show. Thank you for joining me today for the first Reseller Mom Versations of the new year. Sorry we weren't able to make it last week, but I'm very excited to start the year off. This is episode number 18, and I have with me Flora, who is Cactus Peony Posh on Instagram, and I'll let her tell you all of her things, but let's go ahead and get to know Laura. Welcome. Thanks for joining me today. So much. So yeah, my Instagram handle is just Cactus Peony Posh because I stuck Posh in there so it was just easier to find me. Mm -hmm. But then my Poshmark, which is what my big reseller platform is, that is Cactus and Peony. So it varies a little bit. And then I do have a blog and it doesn't get very much attention because I'm so busy with my kids. I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old. And then I try to do a post whenever I can definitely going to have to address that more because my big new year's resolution just came true. I became part of the like to know it style community. Okay. And so for those that don't know what that is, like to no know idea. what I have no idea. Tell me. <laughs> oh, it's like, it's like a fashion Pinterest platform. Oh, okay. and it's basically a lot of fashion influencers that are really good with styling different outfits, being really good with makeup. And I know that I don't, I don't have anything on right now. I just kind of wanted to wake up and just show myself as a real mom when I did this. So mm -hmm. I do it mostly part-time and I joke and I say that I'm full-time-ish. Uh, there's times whenever we get really close to reaching like that full-time threshold and I will get tons and tons of orders. But then with just mom life in general, something might happen where my kids get sick or there's a doctor's appointment or something right. else is up or there's, there's errands to run or I'm not feeling good or I'm having a burnout week. And the beauty of reselling is that I just set my own pace. So there's plenty of weeks where it's like super slow and I might only get like 10 to 15 sales for that whole week. Right. But there's other weeks where it's just crazy busy and I might get 40 to 50 out the door. Nice. So I, I'm part time, but I really, really try to push more and more. The older that my kids get, it's like a game changer. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, they can entertain themselves <laughs> minutes more than normal. Yeah. And we, then you said that they're two and four. So, yeah. you know, Gio is four and are they both boys? I know, I know I've seen one boy on your Instagram. Are they both boys? So I have a boy and a girl. And a girl. And okay. Yeah, and um, she is getting potty trained right now, so we're just taking our time, just real, really like, trying to just wait that process out, and it can be so frustrating because it's like, I could be sharing my closet right now, I could be listing something, but oh yeah, I have a child, and she's got to grow up a little bit, so we have to like, just try to see what she's comfortable with, and I do a lot of cooking at home, and you know, grocery shopping. I do a lot of the mom typical things sure. just because our family is. Yeah. So. so, um, yeah, I mean, and you know, that two age, like I always said, like from one and a half to two and a half, I felt was like the hardest age yeah. because they're, they're doing more and they're independent and they're out and about, but they don't have the attention span and really the ability to like yeah. sit and zone into something like now that Geo's four, I mean, he could play and play and play. And it's like, he's just so good at, you know, doing his own thing sometimes. And then, you know, we'll get together and do, you know, play together um, because I want us to have the interaction. But at the same time, I do encourage him to have that entertaining yourself period because some kids don't, you know, aren't so great at that. So it's nice yeah. because, you know, she's going to kind of start getting into the age where it's going to be a lot easier and then they can play together more, I'm sure. And then you'll get, you know, your life will open up a little bit to do more yeah. stuff. Like they do play together. It's funny because they go back and forth and then there's moments where it's like they're chasing each other around and then that's fun. But then in another minute, there's a wipeout. I was going to say somebody, somebody gets hurt. <laughs> mom, I don't mom. like her. Yeah, I don't like how she's bothering me, mom. She's, she's taking something from me and it just, there's always something to break up. Right. But then they get older and they're able to entertain themselves just a little bit more. Now my son, he's like more dependent. He's more like, mom, come play with me, come play with me. And then my youngest, she can entertain herself pretty good. So mm -hmm. it's just so different from each mom from one to another. That's yeah. what I keep. 
absolutely. And that's why I like doing this show because for me, it's nice to kind of have the camaraderie of learning what other moms are doing with kids that are similar to Gio's age. And then also, you know, kids that are older. Um, it's nice for me to chat with them because I'm like, okay, you know, I start to see the light that Gio's getting older and he can do more himself, which means that I get more time or he's going to be going to school soon. And so, you know, I, even though I don't look forward to it in a way because I like having him home with me and I like the time that we have together, I'm also very ambitious. <laughs> I can't yeah. wait to see what I can do with a full eight hour day, um, you know, of being able to work or whatever. It's been a long time since I've had that. Yeah. Now, I so, just, I crave just, that. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, well, and because, you know, momming is a, a never stopping thing. And so you don't get a break from it unless you get, you know, some kind of help, some kind of relief. Your husband takes them for a little bit or they are at school. So, you know, for someone who is interested in work, um, outside of the home, you know, doing their reselling business or whatever, and you have that ambition, you know, it is hard sometimes to, to balance it. I totally get that. I do want to just like backtrack real quick. So we got into the whole kid stuff, which is great because I think it's good for context for people to know, okay, now you're a stay at home mom with the two yeah, kids I, and the reselling. You don't have another job outside of that. So I am a stay at home, work at home mom, and I could go back to work if I wanted to. But the challenge that I have is that I'd have to find and pay for a babysitter that yeah. would make it worth it for me right. to go to work. Right. So to, to give uh, the story of how I stayed home and why in a nutshell was that I, I went through postpartum depression with my first son mm -hmm. and that was something I would never wish upon any mother, but I know that thousands of women go through that right. and you, do, you don't know, like it sneaks up on you and you'll just start doing either more on the anxious side of things or you completely lose interest and you start avoiding things. And so depression set in with me really bad. And so that was a struggle, but I went back to work and I was actually a preschool teacher for a while. And he would come in with me while I was pregnant with my daughter too, mm -hmm. and he'd like get moved from room to room all the time. And then I would be in one room and I would be there for a while. And then he would get really worked up at the end of the day because he'd be bouncing around and I'd be a closer too. So it was a super long day for him. Yeah. So Fast forward, I had my daughter. She was only four or five days old and she had a fever. And I thought, okay, this is not right. Take her to the hospital. We had to go to Children's, which is in St. Louis. It's a huge, wonderful children's hospital. They took great care of us, but she had viral meningitis. Oh gosh. For all that history that I had and just kind of like a bad family situation too on my side of the family, um, I decided, and my husband too, we'll find a way to make it work. Stay right. at home. Yeah. You know, she, your daughter, we have two kids now, your second daughter, your, your second child just got through something crazy traumatic almost for her because we had to do a little baby spinal tap on her and then she had to have a breathing treatment. I mean, it was just, I know there's so much more serious issues with kids out there and it's sad for every parent that has to be in a hospital situation like that. But right. after I was home, I was like, okay, we can make it work. I won't buy a thing. I'll save the daycare bill. I'll stay home with my kids. I'll just be there for them until they're old enough and uh, until I'm ready to be back yeah. in, in the work zone. Yeah. So I, it was kind of like right under my nose. I had already sold on Poshmark and I just was on YouTube one day. And I was like, oh my God, people actually do this for it's a job. A, it's a thing. <laughs> it, yeah. And then I, I learned that they not only do Poshmark, they do eBay, Mercari, Depop, and all these other different platforms. And I was like, if all I have to do is arrange a post office pickup or do a post office drop off with the kids and I get out of the house for a little bit with them, <laughs> then that's a pretty sweet setup. Yeah, so, no, absolutely. Now, so, and so, so you mentioned all the platforms, so let's cover that. So we know you're on Poshmark. Is that the only one that you're on or you're on multiple or? I am on uh, Poshmark. I'm on eBay. I'm on Mercari. I do have a Depop or Depop. I don't know how to say it. I have an account for that, but I've not been very good at listing on there. And then I, I do consignment with the real, real, because I've, I've found luxury items before, but 
I'm not very good at approaching the right market on that yet for, for buyers on Poshmark. Right. So like, just for an example, I have this Mackage coat that I found at um, Salvation Army for 20 bucks and it retails for 600 and it resells for about 350 and I haven't had I'm not that. <laughs> That's how not luxury. <laughs> I mean, it, I haven't had a, a higher end item like that in a long time. Yeah. So I don't know. I'll probably send it into real real if they'll take it. And then it's nice because they don't have, I don't have to share it or anything like that. And they have the right market that's and, ready to buy. And that's the thing. And I struggle with that too. It's interesting that you brought that up because I feel like I, I have come across some really good things. I mean, I have not heard of that particular brand and I, it's not like I'm finding Louis Vuitton and Prada and whatever, but I feel like there's a middle road of like lesser known high end things that you find. And when you do look it up and you find out it's expensive, you know, you're so excited and you put it on Poshmark and just like nothing happens. Yeah. And it's, it's a shame because that's, you know, I think a lot of people's go-to is Poshmark. It's either Poshmark or eBay is like their number one. And then something else, you know, then they may do a few. And it's like, sometimes eBay can be good for it. I've sold some higher end things on eBay. Um, but it's like, what do you do with it? Should you send it into thread up? I've never done the real, real, obviously that would be a great place. And I know of it, you know, for those types of things I've tried trades -y. And it just is hard because if you do come across that really great thing, you want to make the most of it, you yeah. know, that opportunity. And sometimes Poshmark isn't it. So how yeah. have you sold things then that way on real, real, or you've just sent them in, but they haven't sold yet. Or uh, so I, I, here's how it is on Poshmark for me, just how like my follower base is and like return buyers. I feel like I've got this really comfortable, like $20 ish price range kind of good market for brands like American Eagle, Nike, your typical good brands that you can get at the mall, but it's like, if here's the one cheaper and yeah. Yeah. So I have that listed on Poshmark a lot, but then I rarely run across luxury brands. So whenever I find it, I'm like, I, I will list this. I hope it sells, but I've never run across a real Louis Vuitton before. And I know that if you run across a really high dollar item, so my Mackage coat, um, it's going to take a while to sell because you have this super high priced item. It's going to take the right buyer that will right. fork out a couple hundred or more dollars for that. So I'm just kind of like in the middle of the road. If I send it into the real, real, there's a good chance that they always run sales or they always give site credit that the buyer would probably use that too. So maybe I would get knocked down a little bit on profit, mm -hmm. but maybe it would sell faster. So right. that's, it's like, do you want the money faster or do you want to sit on it and wait? So it's on eBay right now okay. and I've did it already like three times. And I've seen the comps for it. I mean, it's been sold for like 300 ish or 280 somewhere in there. And I'm like, I really want that money. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, and that, you know, those are the things where, you know, they don't come along very often, but, you know, I shop at the bins primarily yeah, now. And, you know, when you do, like, I found Burberry and I found, I've been lucky to find a couple of really good things where you're paying rock bottom you're not even paying up like yeah. you're paying rock bottom and you know that this is a thing and when that sale comes along where you can flip it for two hundred dollars it's like that's why i do this <laughs> right so exactly. i pulled out for it you know and and yeah. you know if you in, and know that you have it it's kind of like an asset and you know if you do need to get rid of it you could probably sell it for less than what you could get for it maybe flip it more quickly if you needed to but yeah try to get the money out of it that you want you know i mean Right. Obviously, I think when you're doing it with the right thing, it makes sense. I think some of us, and I, I used to do it too, but I feel like we want more out of basic stuff. It's yeah. Like, oh no, that's just a twenty dollar one. <laughs> you're not gonna get thirty five for that. Don't wait out for fifty. Just take the twenty and run. But but yeah. those big ones, then you can hold out. Yeah. Yeah, like I always hunt down for like the classic brands, like for jeans. I love to go for Levi's just because they're a good rock steady brand and I'm trying to slowly get out of brands like American Eagle or even Lucky Brand I've noticed doesn't really 
mm-hmm. hit it for me as much as as much as I used to have it. I used to think, oh my gosh, I just made eight dollars. I just made ten. But it's right. like the the more you do this, the more you're like, I know I can do this better, and I can right. make more. So right. I try some brands that are like really unique. Or if I shoe shop, I try to find some really neat leather boots that are distressed if I don't have access to a lot of high-end brands because right. I'm I'm in mostly a rural community I am close to St. What's Louis your, yeah what's your sourcing options go to what's your thing um I actually do a lot of estate sales and I told this to people at the posh party in St. Louis I got to speak at that and my tip is go to estatesales.net and enter your zip code, see what's around you. And I think you'd be surprised because usually people there are nice as can be. Mm-hmm. They are doing stuff because they're helping somebody either move out of their home or they have passed away. And it, it's a family thing where they are just trying to clean this out. And I've come in many times before with 40, 60, $80 cash. And I've said, Hey, I noticed you had a pile of clothes down in the basement and I resell clothes and I just, I'm straightforward with it, but I want to make sure that they understand, Hey, let's help each other out. You know, you get something for a fair price and I can get something that I can work with. And usually, I mean, like nine times out of 10, the people that are there are like, sure, fill up your, yeah. and see what you can find. And I have found great vintage t-shirts. I have found really neat old vintage fashion jewelry. So I don't have access to a lot of big luxury brands. And if I do, they're not, it's not at a good thrift price because they've already grabbed it at my thrift store at like Goodwill or whatever. Yeah. And they have way up. Yeah. So I, I'm not going to buy that. So I had to get creative and that's why I do estate sales. And so 50 cent jewelry pieces or pins. Pins are a really neat thing to get into. Mm. I've made easily 10 bucks on a pin that I spent 50 cents for. Dang. So I do a lot of estate sales. And measurements. <laughs> Don't have to worry about that fitting. Yeah. But... And, yeah. So, or like, there's really, that's an interesting thing. Cause I always, I think I'm at the point where I need one other category that's not my typical clothing that yeah. I start. It's not that I know everything about clothing. I clearly don't, but it's like, I know enough where that's kind of going okay. And I would love something else that's not where I have to do measurements and I have to pack it in my nice bag and I have, you know, like just something, whether it's light, easy, you know, not a lot of pictures, but the thing with, I, I don't know anything about jewelry, like with pins are there a lot of things that you need, like you would need to know, like if it's vintage, what period it's from or what it's made of or like vocabulary for it? If it's, if you think it's cute or if it's kind of like bizarre and different almost, <laughs> then it's like there's more selling potential. And that's what I've noticed. And okay. I feel like I do an article or a, um, a, co- a post soon about the little things because seriously, us as resellers, I think we're always gravitating towards what we think is the big high dollar items like the coats, the pants, dresses, and then all the storage that goes with it can get really frustrating. Absolutely. And I, I have a small one level home. I don't have a basement or a, even my own posh room. I don't have that. I use the living room because I'm in front of my big bay window right now and all this natural light comes yeah. in. So I hunt for little things and sometimes they're like feather hair accessories I can find those or the the flare pins and then I have been finding like denim trucker jackets that are really popular Mm -hmm. or the jersey hood knit and then you can style those pins with a jean jacket and you call them like a vintage flare pin okay but pins are a lot of fun to get into and they're not I would imagine that somebody I mean, I don't know because I, I definitely don't wear pins. I barely wear necklaces. Like I don't wear anything. Um, yeah. Like I, if you're into pins, you may have uh, like you want a cameo pin or you, and that's what you're into, or you're into butterfly pins or dragonfly yeah. pins. Like you might into be into like a certain kind. So it's really more about like the keywords. 
of the topic or theme of the pin rather than what it's like, you know, I'm thinking like, is it, what's the metal? What's the clap? Like all those technical things that I would have no idea about. So hang on a minute. This is my son. Oh. Do you need something? Yeah. Hang on. Real <laughs> life right here. Hang on. What you gotta do? I, I, it died. It died. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> on the kid. Okay. You gotta wait. Go and wait. Thank you. So yeah, that we had a deal. Stay. <laughs> I know that sounds horrible, but we no, had a kid. It's listen. You do what you got to do. I I think right. that there are plenty of moms out there that that know that struggle. That yeah. don't want to be the iPad mom, but sometimes you have to be the iPad mom, or you don't want to be the M and M mom, but sometimes you have to be the M and M mom. Like right. you got to do. What never, you got to do. I never thought I would be that mom, but I am that mom, that mom. Hey, can I be in it? No, you cannot be in it. Go in the kitchen. <laughs> no. Go in the kitchen now. So um, the other thing with pins is that uh, you want to think about the market that could be really good for that. Mm -hmm. And bridal markets are definitely there for pins because they do brooch bouquets or they do the something old where they have it on a, a bouquet, like on the nose gay handle for the yeah. for the so I try to market it like would be really pretty for a bridal bouquet and I put that keyword in there. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, I mean that's why I think it's cool because as you start to learn a new niche, new niche you kind of figure out those things, you know. Yeah. And um yeah, I just I find that very interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I'm yeah. And I mean nobody really wears pins that I see out in public, but I, I think the costume idea might be another market for that like dressing up or trying to play the role of something I don't know like acting maybe on the stage I could see that and I know for a fact that I've probably sold things that are actual clothing items that then were purchased for costume things because I've had like eBay labels where it says like costume department or whatever like and I'm like oh I wonder if those pants are gonna be on Broadway or like you know something like that I know. You know, yeah that's a school play a college you know it's a local theater company. I mean, they all need that stuff and I'm sure they're trying to get it on the cheap and they're looking for very specific looks for the character. So I totally think that that could be, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And again, in, in public, I've looked, oh, honestly, like I've people watched before. I don't see people wearing pins, maybe on a jean jacket though, for like different unique flare pins. I've seen yeah. that. And then maybe on like a coat for something special, like a pea coat. But yeah, yeah it's. Oh, I mean, I don't, I don't, I, you know, yeah, I don't know. And I mean, and I'm pretty good at like picking up things that are, and I don't know that they're actually vintage because I don't know a lot about vintage, but it looks old. It looks like it's a thing. And I've had not all good wins, but a couple of really good things where I find it that I'm like, that looks so interesting. Like I just sold this like glitter color block blouse and I'm like, this is a, like, this is something like, it's got an old looking tag. Like somebody is going to want this. I, I'm not accepting less than $25 for this. And I had it up for 49 <laughs> and I sold it for 34 and it cost like 60 cents. And yeah. that was such a cool sale because it did go for a decent amount, but it's like identifying a cool thing. And then you get the buyer and they also think that it's a cool thing. Like, I get a kick out of that. Is that why you like the pins and stuff like that? Like, or maybe even at estate sales because, like, you're, you've hunted that thing that you've identified as something, and now someone else is validating that pick because yeah. you want it, and you can sell it to them. That's an amazing feeling. When you pick out something and you're like, okay, I'm kind of nervous about this. I think it's really neat. Yeah. I, I feel like I'm picking out something kind of weird here, but I think somebody else somebody wants really, it <laughs> and then it sells and you're like i was right I yes knew. yes and yes you no I, <laughs> I told i'm all, that's exactly what i'm like somebody wants this <laughs> that's what i say if I, and my whole videos are not you know the most amazing but sometimes like somebody wants this i don't care i know that i feel it in my heart <laughs> somebody yep. wants i did want to ask you um I did, go ahead. If you had something else, I know I was going to ask you something else. I was just going to say, it goes in with like, you said you feel it in your heart. It's like, I talk about your fashion gut and how you do build that over time. And it's the weirdest thing, but you will start to feel like 
when you're out thrifting or sourcing, I do Goodwill too. I've done the bins before. I'm getting better and better at it, but I'll see something and it's like, I kind of wait to feel for that. I guess conscious Falling. or yeah, like, is this going to fit? I mean, like you just, you start to know the types of things that really start to go and you, I call it building your fashion gut. You know, if it pulls to you, then you should probably take it. If you really feel like you liked it right away when you yeah. saw it, yeah. that's a really good sign. Yeah, no, I like that. Your fashion gut, that's cool. I like that. Um, I did want to ask you about hosting a posh party because I saw that on your Instagram and I've kind of put out there, I'm like, I have no desire to host a posh, like, like that's not calling my fashion gut. Like <laughs> nothing about it sounds exciting to me. And I think I've asked one other reseller mom about it, but it was a while ago. So I figure I'll just touch on it again. Like what were your feelings about it? Was it worth it to you? What goes into it? So it was totally worth it for me because uh, just again, as a mom, it can be lonely when you resell and you're yeah. not, you feel like you're in a big community and you feel very, very accepted. Poshmark does such a great job of that, mm -hmm. but then you're still alone with your own feelings or your frustrations. And yeah, you can talk online to, to other people, but in real life, it's just so different. You. And yep. I am much more introverted than what I come off as, I guess, on Instagram. I've just gotten so used to it. So um, whenever I did this posh party and I applied for it, I was super surprised that I actually was accepted and I got to speak. And but how long it, did that process take? I'm just curious from um, to it to being accepted. It was a Google Doc. It was on the Poshmark uh, website where they were announcing the cities for the parties. And I did have to submit a brief video of what, I would love to talk about what tips I could offer. And it's like a brief audition basically. Okay. So it was, it was just like this, like yeah. me talking to my phone and then I uploaded it and it took maybe three days, I think for them to confirm back, but I had already hosted two passion sips in my area to try to reap, to build a real community around me. Mm. And then I was super active on Instagram. I had already been on Poshmark for so many years. I think all of that might play into right. how you can speak. But I didn't I didn't feel nervous at all. Whenever I was up there, it just it felt like a like a fireside chat, like a round table type yeah. thing. Everybody I think was that they're pretty good about running things that way so that no one feels like they have to give this major like keynote address, like that it's very much like I'm gonna ask you questions or something yeah. like that, so that people feel comfortable. Yeah, like I, I haven't been to any events yet. There were there was one or two in Orlando that have come up. Um and I just it's just hard. I just can't do it. Um I just don't have the help to to watch geo and stuff. Um and I haven't been to a posh fest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe 2020 will be the year I'm really hoping. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's cool. I think that's great because especially for people that maybe are a little bit introverted, this gives you a way to push yourself and challenge yourself to do things that maybe you wouldn't normally do because you do feel like you have a community around you, perhaps. I mean, I like for me, Instagram isn't so big of a deal for me to feel like I'm putting myself out there. YouTube yeah. was more of a challenge. And so yeah. now that I've kind of hurdled okay I have the channel okay now it's coming up that I'll be on the channel for a year um it's more about pushing the skills like you know what guests do I want to reach out to and challenge myself that way what kind of you know I want to learn different video editing things um you know I wanted to do a live and I've done that now and so being able to challenge myself just to try new things that way um, I was I was just going to say, I was laughing because I have a YouTube channel as well, yeah. and I've done some videos before, but every time I do it, I feel so emotionally drained after it that it's like, oh, like I don't know if this is for me, because Instagram is super easy. I'd love to just take a picture and then write, 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 and express all my thoughts, and then like everybody's photo and then we talk we have private messaging i really like that but yeah. to throw and yourself then... out there on sorry <laughs> on, that was my son being a goofball um, so yeah to, to throw yourself out there on then... video hang on a minute sure no problem 
then just she's gonna have her mom in it but I mean that's the thing is that you know you have to find the right medium for you I knew that Instagram was fine and that's where a lot of resellers were so I'm happy to have my Instagram but I always felt very I'm just kind of like shooting the breeze over here I always felt with Instagram that like it wasn't enough for me like I'm too (laughs) long-winded like before story like yeah you know, I would try to make a video and it would cut me off. And then I would try to upload the stories and then it would, it would get all messed up that I would, you know, get so frustrated trying to explain a tip or share what was going on because I just can't keep my mouth shut. So like I, Instagram yeah. is, is harder for me almost because it forces me to be so succinct and make a point, which is very difficult for me. So I'm like, YouTube, I knew was the way for me to go. I just had to get up like the balls to do it. And, you know, like, go there but I knew for sure that YouTube was for me because I'm like I could just sit here and talk to myself you know it takes a little while to get over that you're talking to yourself but once you know you have people that are watching um that you've gotten some comments and you know that you do have some peeps out there um then it makes it a lot easier because then you know that you are talking to someone it's just not immediate also doing a live, you know, is helpful with that because when you do get a few people, even if it's just a couple, I mean, I think the most I ever had on a live was like 25. Um, wow. at least no, that's, that's really good. Cause no, I, I, in the I, world I, of lives, that's terrible, but I mean, you know, it's, it's fine. My audience is very specific. It's reselling moms. We have other stuff going on, so I can never expect to have the level of YouTube numbers of anything that some of the other ones do because we may not subscribe we may not leave comments we may not even watch the video in totality we may not be able to make a live like there's so many reasons why our life doesn't yeah. lend itself to this that oh, you know yeah. it's cool i'm grateful for whoever happens to show up <laughs> but yeah. um at least you know in real time that they're there that that was very helpful for me. So I would recommend that, you know, at some point challenge yourself and try to go live because you know, there's people there. I, yeah, no, I've tried to go live before and it's always so nerve wracking because you feel like you're saying blah, blah, blah out to the air and you feel like kind of a a Lulu crazy person, but then somebody drops in and another person and I haven't had very many on my lives. So maybe I need to announce it first. Like I go live and read. And that's something else I need to work on too, is more of like a social media content workflow. Yeah. Putting down my phone after I do the Instagram post and just stopping all engagement so I can share my closet because it's so frustrating. And I'm sure you felt the same way. You put all of this energy into the YouTube or the Instagram and then you're like, did I just hurt myself by not sharing more on my closet or listing more because that is all the time me that comes in i i still think about that i i still think about is it worth it um because you know i'm coming up on my year with youtube so i'm really kind of starting to do that introspective like you know i started it on valentine's day last year oddly enough and i'm like you know i only have 1700 subscribers I'm grateful for all of them. It's taken me a lot to get to that point. I feel like I'm out there, you know, promoting the channel where I can, engaging with every comment. Like I'm putting the work in to build it. um, And I'm getting a lot of great success. I'm monetized. I'm grateful for that. Like I've learned so much and I've enjoyed so much. And I think that's where it's like, if you don't actually enjoy it and get something else from it besides any possible money or any possible loss of money, then it's not for you. And you may not know that until you go through it for a little while. I feel like for YouTube, it gives me this. I get to talk to you. I get to know that our conversation's going to other moms that might need that camaraderie or push or need to hear that one thing. On Instagram, I get a lot of comments back um, on some posts and that's exciting. It's always weird and random ones (laughs) that make the most buzz, I think is funny. But, you know, so I do need that community because I did used to work in an office in a sales environment where it was very people driven and I need that. I have to have it. It's, I have to have it. And so I've created that now for myself. And even if I make a thousand dollars less a month from reselling, I think I need to be okay with that because this brings me. If it fulfills that. 
and a creative outlet, you know, because yeah. reselling can get like, I've said it before on the channel, like I don't particularly love actually reselling. Like I don't have a fashion gut. I don't really care about like, you know, fit and flare this and smocked waist that like, I don't care. I wear black long sleeve shirts. Like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. like I wear yoga pants every day and leggings. Like I don't care. Um, I, but yeah. it is a thing that I can do to earn money. I enjoy building a business. I enjoy the process of it. I now enjoy the community that I've created and that all is okay. But if this all revolved around, you know, that I loved the ALF show from back in the eighties and I talked about ALF on my YouTube channel and I sold ALF memorabilia, then yeah. that, you know, then that would have been the thing. Like I have no exact connection to what I'm doing. It's the process of all of it that I really enjoy. I think you hit the nail on the head for me with some of this because, okay, I, first of all, I do enjoy fashion, even though if you call I, it a fashion guy, you must enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. So if I could wear everything, anything every day though, and pick my one outfit, it would be gym shorts and a t-shirt. But mm -hmm. I, I think I like the process of selecting and um, putting together something for somebody that takes them to a higher level. Mm -hmm. And so I started listening to like stylist podcasts to understand more on how it can take you to a new upgraded level in life. Even though you're wearing different clothes, it can help you. And I mean, sure. this I know this, this does not relate to anything in the real world, like third world problems. This is not even, I don't have any knowledge. That's not even my field of professional stuff. So I feel like what I'm talking about might sound a little bit stuck up, but whenever you take yourself to a new level and you style yourself differently, you grab the attention of different people that treat you differently. It's yeah. just, it's such an amazing thing that I've read into where it's like a form of art. It takes you to a new level. So I agree with that. I mean, if you want to change your life, they do say, you know, change how you want your appearance to be. So I want it to be perceived as more warm and friendly online. And so I started to put my hair back. I wore headbands that had a brighter color around my face to frame them. So it's just, it's funny how all of that can do that for you when you get into fashion. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah and I, I left I, guess it I don't, I don't, I, I can see what you're saying. And I do think that that makes sense. And, you know, on certain days when I was in the office, I would wear a certain kind of suit if I had a certain kind of thing going on because I needed to present that level. And I do sometimes get a little bit annoyed where I know that I look like I have nowhere special to go because I don't have anywhere special to go. You and know, I get annoyed when I go somewhere and you get treated like your time is not as valuable because you look like you have nowhere special to go. And that bugs me sometimes. So I definitely see that. I don't know if I, in this particular season and stage, <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah. Care, like care I'm, that much because there's more like real life nitty gritty things going on that you know I feel like is important but I could totally see that for maybe someone who's single or even a mom that's maybe getting ready to get the confidence to go back out into the workforce or something like that like I definitely see truth to that for sure yeah no I wouldn't trade my work outfit like especially right now comfy long sleeve shirt and leggings I wouldn't trade that for anything for a workplace because I used to work in education and it was super depressing for me to see a lot of people coming back for a college education and they had already built up so much debt from their first degree and so they would come in and apply and of course they were an education system they needed money and that's their customer so they'd accept them and the reality is is that these people that were coming in to get another degree already had so much they were into debt spending and they were convinced that if they had another degree that life would be uh, so much better and fulfilling. And in some cases, I think it's true. If you want to go back for something like nursing or whatever, I'm, I'm not against education, but for me, it was super depressing to be in the role of helping all these people come in and they didn't have a clear message of how much they were probably going to screw themselves over and I couldn't advise on that. You know, I, know, I totally get that. Actually for a while, um, when was that? For a while I was an admissions advisor 
quote unquote, which means I worked in a call center for an online university. And it was, it was a gig, you know, it was it during the whole economic downturn and I was in between things. And um, yeah, I mean, there were people that would call in and they had this idea about school and my job was just sell them to go to school. But yeah, you kind of knew in the back of your head that like, probably what you don't need is school, what you probably need yeah. to do just do something like a little bit more practical and like really give it a go, you know, like and, and that is where it's like, okay, here's where like the creative part of me comes out. That is not that that's just that's society selling you something that is the idea of what you think you need. And I, sorry, I got off topic with an old job that I absolutely was miserable at. I mean, it was, yeah, I, didn't like it either. And I think the only thing I really missed was that I got to go in and kind of have some job ownership and do what I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, the thing with, with what I do now is that I'm creative in a sense that it's not that you have to buy the most high dollar thing. There's so much more that is affordable for you. Absolutely. Style yourself to get you where you think you need to be. You know, so many people go through transformations. They read books, they do meditations. And part of changing yourself is kind of changing your style. Yeah, I think that's great. And maybe that's, you know, the direction that you go with your YouTube channel or something like that. I feel like, you know, at, there are resellers that are more like either your business kind of reseller you're doing it for the business aspect of it and then there are the fashion resellers that do it because they love fashion and styling and kind of what you're talking about that's not me so like you're on this side and I'm on this side I do I can make money at it and I enjoy making money and it could be a widget or a slimy snake or whatever and I would sell it because I enjoy the process of building a business um and that's what makes me tick but for you it sounds like what makes you tick is like you said, the creativity, the styling, the feeling that you know someone will get when they put something on that they wouldn't have thought to put together, but now here's this, you know, greater than the sum of its parts look and, you know, doing it on a budget and, you know, yeah. mishmashing prints and colors and styles and you know, like all that stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I appreciate your insight because I think the last YouTube video I did was actually where I spoke with another girl who had been through some hard times. I think she had, if I remember correctly, I think she had lost a baby and just really low point in her life. And also she lost a ton of weight because she wanted to. And so she was looking through her closet, doing a huge clean out. And we talked about, you know, what can you kind of replace some items with that are brand new, that are giving you a different look and so you don't remember the bad times that were associated with wow, those Wow, yeah, that's, that's, I mean, there's, like you say, there's so much emotion that can be tied to that, you know, for some people. I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know, perhaps I could go through my closet. Like, there's a few things where I guess I would feel like I have an attachment to it in some way, but most things I don't really care that much. Like I'm waiting for when, I mean, it would put me out of a job. It would put us all out of a job, but when our society moves to evolve beyond fashion, where we just realize that like you could just go around in a sack and as long as your body's covered, that's acceptable. And we also wear the same sack and it's like a government issued sack and like, no, yeah. like fashion doesn't exist anymore. Like not that I'm looking forward to that, but like in those, you know, demolition man kind of movies or something like that. Like I could totally see that that, would, that that could happen when the, you know, robots are in charge or whatever, but. It's like, and see that pressing to me. And whenever I, my job in like that kind of higher education background and even like the teaching background too, I had all these clothes and that, that I think that a lot of resellers kind of have this story too, how they got into it when they sold their clothing. Yeah. All that stuff reminds you and makes you feel bad from a bad point in your life. Yeah. And you're done being depressed. You're done feeling like that. So you get rid of it, you sell it. And the whole Marie Kondo thing is so popular right now too. And you tidy up, you get a new thing together to make yourself feel better. And that's kind of how I started with my clothing too, with selling on Poshmark. I got rid of a ton of career clothing. Hello. That's a dog. <laughs> you have two dogs, right? This, like really quick. 
because my son had like this snake and he was trying to put it under here and play with me and I'm like get out of here and I threw it so, so we, we had a period where there were snakes all over our floor in every room because Gio was like into the really wiggly rubbery ones and then the ones that are kind of like static and so we had all these different snakes and like I wake up super early in the morning and I had to remember to myself like okay if you see a a shadow on the floor at 4 30 in the morning when it's dark it's not a real snake don't scream and wake everybody up like you're not being overrun by snakes at 4 30 in the morning it's not real <laughs> yeah it, yeah no he's it, he's into snakes he loves dinosaurs and coincidentally he found i swear he's like straight out of the 60s he found godzilla oh. so santa got him a godzilla for christmas no way. he has been so pumped about it ever since and so i guess the transition from dinosaurs to godzilla just that that he's been super into it and yeah, so we're on a star wars kick right now and i don't really <laughs> think that ending anytime soon so i don't know that that might be my life for a little i don't mind it it's it's fine yeah it's not as violent as it could be but it's a little more violent than i thought we were going to be at this age <laughs> yeah i mean star it wars stuck up on me <laughs> I no, I mean I, I think we'll watch, watch Star Wars. I'd like to do the old ones first though. Yeah. And keep it classic, but I hope they can sit through that and see the the action that I loved whenever I was little. Because of course I've seen every Star Wars. Oh yeah. I mean I have no desire. I just, that's him and his and my husband's thing. Like they do I that is not for me. Like I'm not a fantasy sci fi. Like that's yeah, that is not my world. But like, um, but they are into it and they do have a good time and it's a good bonding thing. Like I said, I think that's why my husband likes it because it's something that he grew up and now he can share that. And like, that's cool. And we have Disney plus now, which is. We do too. Insane. Oh my God. Like it's everything. And like how he feels about the star Wars thing. Like when we watched the lion King, Gio and I, that was a very nice and almost emotional experience for me because I, I love, love that movie. I, I forgot love. how much I loved that movie. And being able to, yeah, like, you know, I remember singing those songs when I was little and, you know, what I was doing when I was little and, you know, like now he, I, it's just, it's a really trippy thing, Disney, and they can have all my money. They really can. Yeah. <laughs> I will give them all my money because they're just yeah, amazing. Now the, the long-term plan, I think, of what I want to do with some reseller earnings is really set aside a chunk for Disney World. Come to but, Disney. Come to Orlando. That, like, that's way down the line and yeah. I want Sure that my kids can remember it <laughs> yeah wait till they're a little like, bit bigger because yeah. and, and there's less that you'll have to deal with bringing diapers and this and yeah. that and what they can eat and do they need a nap and wait till they're a little older I, I see people dragging around all these kids and obviously I I get it they're so excited but it is um it's ugh, you know but I mean we live here it's in our backyard we go all the time and we're so oh excited. yeah you I forgot yeah, you're here in so <laughs> yeah. that's well, for all of these selling moms, you know, I feel like I should do like a Orlando reseller service. So like you can say, you should. Okay, family, you go to, to Disney World. I'll go for a little bit, but secretly mama wants to go on a binge trip and I'll go with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no. I've, I've often thought, you know, I'm so good at the, the thrift life and couponing and all that. I thought about trying to be more like accessible to moms that just want to have some really good online deals and trying to get into like the coupon codes or sale alerts, things like that. So maybe you'd be good at, you know, showing what it's like to take a Disney vacation on like maybe the lowest budget possible because I think, well, but I think that a lot of us are reseller moms and, and we're just always, we're on more of a tighter spending thing because we know we have to reinvest. We have to do the groceries and the bills, things yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean, I the thing is, is because I am here and I can just drive to it, I'm really kind of out of touch with what it means to go to Disney as a vacation, like how expensive it is, all what goes into it. Um, yeah. Because I'm here and I kind of like forget, like I'm removed from it. But I, you know, my corporate job before was in, um, you know, I worked for the Visitors Bureau here, but I was on the meeting side. So everything I did was very business to business for meetings and conventions and, you know, things like Posh Fest and stuff. It wasn't, um, you know, the random family coming to Disney. That wasn't my particular job scope. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, I was an extreme couponer a while ago before geo. I feel like now would be very difficult for me to track because sometimes you yeah. need to really jump on a deal immediately. And, mm -hmm. um, I, I can't jump on anything immediately. <laughs> I'm like three days behind on everything. So jumping on something immediately is not, is not my season right now. But yeah, I mean, I definitely think that there's, there's something out there for it. I like doing, um, like how I can save on my expenses more and being kind of like resourceful with stuff. So I do, I would like to do more videos about that, but anyway, we're getting um, off topic and then I want to be mindful of your time. And then I got my buzz over here. That said my Walmart grocery order is ready, which means I'll pick up the groceries soon, yeah. um, which I love, but I did want to ask you and what I started to ask you, but maybe I was confused. So I saw on your Instagram posting a posh party, but then you started talking about an in-person thing but I meant the, a po like a Poshmark party. Were you, were you a party host on like, Poshmark? Like, yeah, like the style at seven o'clock okay. or the 10 yeah. o'clock. Okay, that's what I was talking about. And then you started talking about the other thing, which is fine too, and with okay. information. But I'm more curious about, because I've never done it. And like I said, I just don't, like, is it worth it? It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Like, it's totally worth it. Um, <laughs> sorry. Being <laughs> quiet. She parks at everything, and oh, that's another challenge. Come here, quit it. She has magical fibers, which are her hair particles that go on every piece of clothing, <laughs> and sure that everything is like spick and span whenever I store my clothes. But anyway, hosting an online Poshmark party is super fun. It does bring you in, I would say, a good couple thousand followers and tons of shares. Okay, um, you will be crazy busy when you do it because you'll be reaching out to new people to kind of give them that surprise like hey I just picked your, your item for a host pick <sighs> sorry and, <laughs> and then you're gonna pick out people that are in the party too that have a great item uh -huh. but what I to let myself be a good candidate was that and I've told this to other people that have private messaged me how do you get to be an online party host um Make sure your closet is closet compliant, which I'm not saying yours isn't. I'm sure it is. I mean, you I probably I hope way so. <laughs> more, have way more than, than me on like profits and the right things to do. Cause I think you've been doing this a lot longer than me. Probably. How many years have you been doing this? About three and a half. Geo just turned four oh, about three I, and a half. Yeah. I probably right along the lines with you then. I think yeah. I've been doing this solid. Go ahead. For solidly for about three years. But anyway, years. I did. I did I even in, um, reseller mom years. So, you know, if, if this was before geo three and a half years, I'd be like, you know, a, a multi bajillionaire of, you know, reselling because yeah. I, you know, that's the kind of like work ethic ambition person I am. Like I'd have, you know, 10, that like be like on Ted K on the Bay daily refinement guy. Like I have so many listings, but you know, it's in reseller mom years. So three and a half years, reseller mom years is equivalent to like, one year <laughs> yeah and yeah like i'm on the same page with you too like i I've, I've been doing this for about three years and oh my gosh if only i would have known and i could have done this a little bit more and instead of being like a, a preschool like daycare teacher which by the time i paid my bill oh yeah son mm -hmm. and then by the time i brought home my paycheck it was right. like there was nothing so anyway back on the poshmark hosting i did email poshmark and said I would love to be considered as a host, but I didn't do it every single day. You know, I just, I kept it very simple and I kept it very professional. And I said, I think I would have a lot to offer. I would love to be a part of the community and support new users as well as seasoned users. And I just kind of like made myself known. Yeah. And I think I said before, I have hosted passion sips before. So I think as long as you really show whether online or in real life, that you're really part of the Poshmark community right, and that you Poshmark committed. I think they will reach out to you and they'll say, Hey, we have an opportunity. Do you want to host a party? Nice. And then immediately say yes, because I think in about 24 to 48 hours, it's like, if they don't hear anything, they're going to go to the next right, person. Yeah, they need to line it all up. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. That, I, yeah, I mean, like part of me is like, ah, oh, maybe just because it's a thing to check off on, like experiences that you can have and 
whatever. I just am like, it sounds like an awful lot of nonsense. And like, I've had host picks before. And in the beginning, I was always very much like, thank you. And I would share the party host stuff for picking my thing. And you know, but they never sell. <laughs> you get all yeah. the talk of any, like activity in your closet, but nothing turns into anything. You get all of these messages with 500,000 emojis. I'm like, oh my God, like, yeah, I don't have time for that. Like, so I just ignore it now, which I feel really bad. It seems very, bu you know, like humbuggy of me, but like, I just don't. <laughs> like, I just, uh, um, the, the thing with whenever I get a host pick, I'm like, oh, yay, thank you. And then, you know, some people, they, they jump in and they share. It's nice, yeah. but it doesn't really do anything to make yourself uh, feel like you're going to have an item that sells faster. But if you are the party host, that's different because you do gain a lot of attention. And if you promote it on your own social media platform, like Instagram, right. it definitely helps you directly as like a reseller leader. That's what right. I'm trying to say. Like it, it is definitely good to host an online party if you're really wanting to get into that like reseller leadership type. Right. Role. And that's what I think is very interesting about a community like this and then we can kind of wrap it up too because i want to be mindful of both of our times and the watchers you know the viewers too but yeah. like it, there is this community but we've kind of self-formed so there's no leader there's no rules there's no anything you have different factions right like people that do measurements people that don't do measurements people that like um to post pictures of their packages with their feet and people like me that's like that's the silliest thing ever like you know, you have all of these different viewpoints and what have you. And, but there are some people that want to put themselves forward as like leaders. And I find it very interesting. Like I was a sociology major. So I find all of that kind of stuff very interesting. Like we don't really, like we call it a community, but there's no rules. There's no anything. It just kind of, I feel like it's like a blob, like, yeah, go this it, way, but there's still the people over here. Then you kind of go this way, but there's, it's very interesting. And like, you would think like the people on Instagram are somewhat, you know, leaders, influencers, whatever that have big followings because they can exert some influence. People on YouTube are clearly, um, myself not included because I'm like, you know, a little squirt on the totem pole, but, <laughs> no. but, yeah. but I do take that role kind of seriously and yeah. would like to make more of it and felt like you know with my little mom community like this is my place this is where i can provide value this is the small sub community i can make in the grand scheme of the reseller community so i don't know i, I find it very interesting who wants to take a place as like a community person and who is more fine to just watch view maybe put some things out there show their finds but they're not going to like give their tips you know like i just find it very interesting of who put who chooses to put themselves out there as an influencer let's say and who chooses to take it all in and benefit from it yeah and, and there's good there's good and bad to both of it you know what i mean like i consume content but then i also put out content so yeah. i'm in the middle i guess you know i don't know i find and my sister you know, she watches all the videos and stuff. She puts some things out on Instagram, but I don't think that she has any desire to be really putting herself out there, you know? Um, yeah. She just wants it, to take it all in and learn from it. I just find it very and, interesting. Yeah, and, and I mean, I feel like that shows too, like your level of leadership that you want definitely um, gets reciprocated on how you, you put, put yourself out there on Instagram, Snapchat, whatever. And then in the Poshmark community, like you said, it's so, it's so blah. And I was a counseling grad major before I decided to stay home and I'm never going to finish my master's degree. I've decided it's just not worth my time, but I'm always amazed at the level of community and how many unknowns are out there. Yeah. But then there's, it's still so much more evolving. And so with Poshmark home, everybody was confused at first on glass items. If it's a serving ware and it's a plate and it's glass, why can't we list it? And then they adjusted that, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm always feeling like there's a little bit of a gray area at times with Poshmark because I don't really hear too many rules. And I, I know that they just kind of give you a slap on the hand if you disobey, but sometimes I feel like 
they're still evolving so much that everything's so loose. They really are. Yeah. I mean, for sure. I think they really are. And I think they're, I mean, I don't know, this is just my opinion, but I, I would, I would think it would benefit them the most for them to be as anti eBay and as yeah. opposite from eBay as possible because so many people get so frustrated and are so scared of so many rigid things with eBay that for Cashmark, the ease, the fluidity, and the, not Wild West, because it's not Wild West, but like the openness that it is without all of these crazy rules and, you know, being afraid of this and, you know, all of that, I think is better. And that's going to keep people flocking to them. Now, whether once they become a public company or whatever, yeah, start dropping the hammer on people, I don't know. But um, it'll be very interesting to see what goes on with Poshmark. And I'm kind of fascinated with it because very rarely do you get to be involved in something at kind of the ground level. Um, yeah. And even though I didn't start on it when it first started, whenever that was in 2012, I didn't start on it till 2016. Um, I still kind of feel like I'm in on it on the ground level and being able to watch what happens with the company and kind of be part of them as a seller is really cool. You know, eBay, I don't know. Like, I don't, I mean, I don't think it's going anywhere, but I don't, I, it's not on its ground level. <laughs> it's, I, um, on a, on a thread, cause you talked about how you have your own, you have your own Facebook community. No, I didn't know. I, there's a group that I was a part of that someone else started and I'm an admin in it, but honestly, I just mostly focus on YouTube and, and, um, Instagram. I have a Facebook page, but I don't really do anything too much with it. I just have it. Um, yeah. and I'm in some groups, but I'm not as active as I'd like to be. So I don't so, have a Facebook community. Now. Yeah, this is where, okay. So on a, on the Facebook community thread, it wasn't mine. I have a Facebook community and I can talk about that like really at the very end, but on the thread, somebody, I think from Poshmark had asked, what do you want? Hang on a minute. <laughs> for those that are still watching, thank you so much for being with us this time. It's actually going quite long, um, but that's good. I mean, we had a lot of things to talk about, which is awesome. And once she comes back, we'll go ahead and kind of get these last couple of topics covered and then wrap it up. But I do appreciate those that are still <laughs> hanging out with us. I, this may be my longest conversations um, that we've ever had. So and yeah, we well, need let's, say, let's talk about this and then we'll wrap it because I'm, I'm yeah. I don't know how many people could stay on for no. over an hour with us. I was kind of waiting for you to wrap it up. I'm sorry. Then, I don't say I'm going to do it. Then I talk about something else that I'm, a, it's my fault. I'm terrible. <laughs> it, was a good, it was a good conversation. Oh, absolutely. So, this has been great. Yeah. So on one thread, um, there was this comment on what would you like to see more from Poshmark that's different? And a ton of people were saying um, like different things like, adding more like makeup liquid departments that were okay to ship more liquid soaps, even though you see them all the time on there, you're really yeah. not supposed to ship like big shampoo bottles and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I suggested um, make it able to ship furniture because small furniture items, not like huge swings or whatever. Right. Um, because Etsy has a kind of a good home decor market on small like end tables, chairs, like big patio covers, things like that. Like, I feel like that's a whole new home decor addition that they could be doing. So there were tons of suggestions out there, but yeah, I think they need to keep it open and not super disciplined, like how eBay has it. Yeah, you know, and, and, and I think that there's also a faction of people that probably don't want to see Poshmark expand more into other categories aside from clothing. And I think some people are even upset that they expanded into home and then it's like office yeah. stuff. And, you know, I mean, it's fine. I don't pay attention to any of that. I don't buy a lot on there, but if I do, I'm not always thinking about, let me go on there to buy my notebooks and my, you know, uh, home decor I items. But you know, if somebody does good and the more money they can make, the better somebody selling their signs and whatever do doesn't bother me. And I've actually put up like box signs, like the primitive rustic box signs. And some of those have sold. Um, so, you know, it's fine. It, it doesn't bother me. It was nice though, knowing that it was just clothes. I don't yeah. know. I, I liked that. Um, but we'll see what happens. I'm just excited that when they do decide to go public, I already told my husband, I'm like, listen, we're buying so much stock. Like, 
buying a bunch of it. I mean, I'm not going to put, you know, I'm not going to reallocate my entire retirement plan to it, but I, it's cool. Like to be in on an IPO in the beginning, I think that would be really awesome and be yeah. an owner in the company as well as um, a seller. And I had eBay stock a little bit and then I, I got rid of it. I was just like, I, I don't feel the same connection to eBay and its success as I do to Poshmark for some reason. Yeah. It, but you've been in there for a longer time and it's like the, the way the customer service is, it's just so much more personable. I feel like that's the winning part right there. Yeah. They're doing a lot of things, right? And mm -hmm. you know, when you're new and you're coming into the scene and have the ability to disrupt like they have, um, you have the more flexibility because you are young to do it. I mean, I think we all can't hold it against eBay that they're this giant clunker and until they decide to not be a giant clunker anymore, you know, they're going to still be a giant clunker. And that makes things <laughs> difficult. Yeah. That's what, that's why I'm like, they're just a giant clunker on the internet. Okay. We have done over an hour on this conversations. I think this is the very first time I'll have to go back and look and see, but it's been awesome. I appreciate having you. It was a great conversation. We talked yeah. about a lot of cool things. Um, so go ahead and just let everyone know again where they can find you. I will link it all below, but just go ahead and tell them and then. Okay. 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 So if you want to find me on Instagram, that's my most active social media platform. It is cactus peony posh. And then my Poshmark closet name is cactus and peony. And I'm on Twitter cactus peony posh. I'm on YouTube cactus peony posh. I have a blog www.cactuspeony.com. Okay. Don't be, don't be excited. There's not a lot of content on there. <laughs> you and have then, a whole, you have a whole, lots, lots of time. You've got lots of time. Yeah. And then I do have a Facebook community that's slowly growing and it's called re, uh, Poshmark or no reseller friends. Okay. So that's look, good. look for that if you want to. Cool. And, yeah. Very yeah. good. Well, thank you so much for being on. I really enjoyed it. I appreciate it. And everyone watching, thank you so much for sticking around with us for this long of yeah. time. Maybe you're watching us in spurts, but um, we do appreciate it. This was the first, again, Momversations of the New Year. So excited. Episode number 18. Thanks for joining me. Um, they go live every Saturday and um, I just appreciate your time. Thanks so much. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.